Good morning, folks. I want to, my call to worship, I want to read a psalm, short psalm. It's uh, one of the psalms from the accents sent to Jerusalem. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming, going, both now and forevermore. We'll start praising God in our first hymn this morning. Uh, it's from Mission Praise 111. Dear Lord and Father of mankind. Dear Lord. Let us pray. Let us just be still before God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come to praise your holy name this morning. With thankful hearts, we remember before you the many blessings you have poured out on us all through our lives. 
Even when we walked in difficult times, your presence was always with us, guiding us through. In times when we were not aware of your presence, still you were there, because your promise is never to leave us or forsake us. And we thank you, Lord. We ask your forgiveness for the times we fail to worship you as we should. When we forget that you are the creator of mankind and that everything in this world and the universe has been put into place by your almighty power and grace. Lord, there are times we speak when we should just listen to the people around us. Sometimes we say things without thinking about the hurt we can cause. So Lord, forgive us and help us to do better. Teach us how to live as the people you want us to be so that others can learn about your love. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. We ask your blessing on each person gathered here in this place. May your presence be with those who cannot worship with us today for whatever reason. And we pray that this time of worship is to the glory of your wonderful name. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading this morning is in Mark 4, beginning to read at verse 35, and it's in page 951 if you want to follow. So that's Mark 4, beginning to read at 35. Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And we thank God for this wonderful teaching. We're going to sing again, and it's um, Mission Praise 975, Before the Throne of God Above. So let us stand and worship God. Because the sinless Savior 
Savior died My sinful soul is counted free For God the just is satisfied To look on Him and pardon me To look on Him and pardon me Behold Him there, the risen Lamb My perfect spotless righteousness The great unchangeable I am The King of glory and of grace One with Himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by His blood My life is hid with Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my God With Christ my Savior and my God One with Himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by His blood My life is hid with Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my God With Christ my Savior and my God Come to our prayers of intercession this morning. And there's many things we could pray about. Not least of all, the disruption in Paris with the, with the Olympic Games, and we pray that that will continue without any more problems. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you seeking your mercy grace and presence to hear and receive your holy word. We pray for the needs of our people, the people of the world, to listen to the Holy Spirit as we partake at this time of worship and prayer. Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, hear from us from heaven, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say, come to mind of those people whom we need prayer for in your life and whom you know. So what is a period of silence in which we can bring those names to the Lord? Lord, remember those names whom we brought before you. To all this congregation who are in need, in need of a touch from you, Lord, your love and your peace. We, Lord, we ask for those needing relief from pain, those in care, that they may be aware of your presence and love, those in short or long-term illnesses, we seek your healing. Especially those names we had remembered this morning. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. We pray for all the preachers of this circuit, for our minister, Sam Livingstone, for the retired ministers. We remember Sam McGuffin, who's with us this morning. He fulfills the pastoral needs on the circuit and leads our services. Reverend Joe Sweeney now joined back again in the ministry team. Lord, we pray for them. 
We pray for all preachers, both lay and ordained, as they fulfill their preaching appointments, as they do, and as also as they do their preparation, we ask that the Holy Spirit be strong in them as they lead the people. We also pray for those areas, others in the circuit who may see a need of preachers and will come forward and receive your call into local preaching. We pray for our mission initiatives in Port Rush. We pray also for the, the circuit that we may find direction by the Holy Spirit and the power to help us in our outreach ministry to others. We pray for the countries of this world in conflict. Particularly, we pray for Gaza. We pray for peace. We pray for the release of hostages. Let your love be known by those bereaved by the conflict. We pray for Ukraine in their war against Russian invasion. Many, many thousands of people and soldiers have been killed or injured. We pray for peace in that situation and comfort and love for the bereaved and injured. We pray for the world affected by natural disasters, whether it by forest fires. We can think of Canada, what's going on there. We can think of, of uh, California. By flood, we think in particular of China. By hurricane and typhoon, we think of particular of the Caribbean and the island peoples there. We pray for the bereaved, that they may know your peace and love. And those made homeless at the relief organizations may be helped by you, Lord, bringing solutions to their plight. These things are a brief mention in our news broadcasts. But let us not forget the continuing situation that people find themselves in. So we need to continue to pray for the people. We remember, Lord, that no matter happens in this world, that you are sovereign over all things, that you care and love all people, and made the way by which we may have salvation in Jesus Christ. Give us the power to, sp to spread your gospel by your Holy Spirit. Your kingdom come. We all are looking forward to that day when the world will pass away and we will all rejoice in your kingdom of justice and peace. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Saviour. Amen. We continue praising God in hymn number, uh, Mission Praise 168. Give me faith which can remove. Give me the faith which can remove and sink a mountain to a plain. Give me the childlike praying love which longs to build thy love again. Thy love let it my heart
I haven't been preaching for quite some time. And um, so I was thinking, what am I going to preach on? And uh, a couple of passages come up. And this passage came up first. And then I ignored it and went on to the other ones. And it came up again. And then and again, and this passage came up again. And I thought, I think somebody's trying to tell me something. So I decided I would preach on it. Jesus calms the storm. This is my first time in the pulpit since coming back from conference as well and my other adventures. I know most people think that the Methodist conference is boring talking shop where many things are talked about and very little happens. Well, I can tell you this year it was not boring. And I find the teaching there very stimulating. And I pray that many things will happen as a result. These things, they start with the individual congregation and each individual within each church. The theme was, as it was last year, living wholeheartedly as followers of Jesus for the transformation of the world. It starts in this church. It starts with our friends, our neighbours, our street, our town, and in our country. As people come to follow Jesus as their saviour, we will transform the, lo- the world. So let's look at this passage. And the thought came to my mind, how big is your God? And I want you to think about this this morning. Is he sort of this big or perhaps he's you know, this big, or maybe he's that big. The disciples left in their boats to cross Galilee, a lake which can blow up quite a storm because of the shape of the land and actually similar conditions can occur and Fermanagh, close to where I used to live, down at the, at the lower Lake Erne. And as my boats on that lake should be seagoing type. Many a person has got caught out while fishing when conditions change and change very quickly. And waves of three foot and higher can slap against their boat. It was probably Peter's boat they were in, something like the model shown here. Uh, Probably about a 30-foot boat, maybe slightly bigger. I can't really get any much information about just what size they were. But they were quite a big boat. And obviously, as a fisher person, the bigger your boat, the bigger the catch you can hold. But no experienced fisherman like Peter was would have set sail that day if they expected a big storm. Jesus, before they left, was teaching the crowd about the kingdom of God. And Jesus always encountered those who needed healing. Jesus was physically tired, which showed humanity. So Jesus settled down on the cushion at the back of the boat and fell asleep as they left the shore. Across the fierce storm arose that frightened them. Even these seasoned fishermen. They feared for their lives. The boat was fearfully shipping water. Where was Jesus? He was sleeping at the back of the boat. And then the accusation started. Jesus, didn't you care about us? Jesus, were you worried about us in case we were drowning? 
They didn't seem to realize that they drowned. Possibly he would as well. Anyway, what they wanted Jesus to do about this situation didn't seem to come into that conversation. They seemed to want Jesus to help them, possibly keep the boat afloat till they got ashore. But Jesus was disappointed in them and told them off for a lack of faith. He said, how is it that you have no faith? Of all people, Jesus' own disciples should have had faith. How would it be if Jesus put the same question to us this morning? After all, I have done for you and for you. How is it that you have no faith? Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. I put that picture there of a calm sea, not hardly a ripple on it. It's hard to come across such conditions. Because the sea and and large lakes are generally in a restless state. The only time I've come across such calm conditions was one time Valerie and I were travelling to Wales. And we took the ferry out of Dublin into Wales. That day, the sea crossing, I couldn't believe it actually, was as smooth as glass. There wasn't a ripple on it. Valerie was glad it's all sailing has to be done in big ships and the sea has to behave itself. It's a bit difficult usually having to persuade Valerie that the ferries really are quite big and they've got and they're not going to sink too easily. What do you think the disciples should have been doing now? Do you think they should be cheering and celebrating after what happened? No, they were terrified. And asked each other, who is this even the wind and waves obey him? Who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? That's why I put up the question, how big is your God? Jesus had demonstrated to them he was fully man when he became tired and needed sleep. And fully God, when Jesus had the power over the elements of nature, after all, he created them. What was it that made them not see Jesus' abilities? After all, they saw him healing the sick, halt on the lame, instantly being healed. Jesus had told them who he was. Was he just too loving and friendly? The gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Yet, he was there at creation. John, I'm sure he was there in the boat, wrote in his gospel, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was there with God at the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. The disciples are learning just how big is their God. Teaching schools in higher education, which I've gone through at the moment and retired from, that teach that the world came into being by a big bang and then evolved to the state we find it today. God is removed from the equation. In fact, any attempt to add God to this will be received dismissively by the establishment. Scientists who push this theory of evolution generally, not saying all of them, but generally are atheist or agnostic and spend billions of pounds trying to prove their theories. Does that colour our expectations of Jesus? 
God tells us throughout the scriptures, he created the world, this universe. The greatest creation was man and woman. Scientists who actually are Christians, who believe the Bible, that it is the revelation of God, and they take seriously that the chapters in Genesis, and they take those as history, and have proven by scientific observations that this world and all there is is young. And by scripture, about 67,000 years old. This is a big subject, and I don't intend to go into it this morning. But I ask, how big is your God? Mine is very big indeed, because he is the creator of this world, creator of you and me, and it all started 67,000 years ago. Who is this? They said, even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this Jesus we believe in? What is it he cannot overcome? Jesus, when he left us, he promised that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would be sent, and that we would become temples in which the Holy Spirit would dwell. The Holy Spirit is the enabler that gives us the means to overcome. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, became transformed into a bold preacher, as we can read in Acts chapter 2, no longer hiding away in fear of authorities, but taking them on by preaching the truth of Jesus. The Pentecost experience is not just for a day we celebrate as we did a few weeks ago, but we'll all have that Pentecost experience as we believe and receive Jesus as our Saviour and Lord. We receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in us and we have the same power within us as Jesus demonstrated at Galilee. Because Jesus said, of those who would receive the, receive the Holy Spirit, that they would do greater things than he did. It's not amazing. Or is it terrifying, the same as the disciples had, not their experience? Is that why perhaps we're reluctant to call upon the Holy Spirit? Because we fear him. Scared of what he might ask of us. To remind us at conference to what we're called and remind us of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, the delegates are all called forward if they wanted to, of course. I did. To be anointed with oil. I found it an experience which was humbling and also ministering to me and what is my calling. It was to instill in us the, of what we have within when we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the work we are anointed to do in transforming the world. The Holy Spirit is the power which transforms. And that transforming will only take place with the Holy Spirit there. He'll be there to do the transforming if we do our work of proclaiming. Without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus, as the disciples found out on that boat, their efforts were next to useless. It is he that makes the difference. It is he who does the transforming. And we are his tools in the proclaiming of the gospel. Even the most faithful and dedicated Christian can run into difficulty. Storms can arise and our faith being tested. Or not necessarily so, 
as Paul in Ephesians reminds us, for we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. And Jesus reminds us that we're not alone in transforming the world. No matter what we come against, Jesus gives us the power to overcome. As I said earlier, the transformation of the world must start with each individual. As we proclaim the gospel, and it's not only when the people we're talking to realize that they can do nothing to stop themselves from perishing, that they believe that Jesus is the only way, believe that Jesus is he who he says he is and what Jesus did on the cross that brought them their salvation. It is the Holy Spirit's influencing and leading them that can bring them to the faith in Jesus. Their faith will make them whole and save them. Baptized by the Holy Spirit, they can then bring good news then to others. And that's how it works. This is what we are called to do, bring good news to others. And by doing so, that the Holy Spirit will do his work and that how the world will be transformed. Our God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, creator of this world and all we see in the universe, has the power to overcome all, we, all the things that we may come across. Why should we try to do it on our own? Why should we try to do things in our own, own strength when we have this indwelling Holy Spirit on our side there to help us? All it takes is faith. As the disciples found out that day in the lake, there is much more to Jesus above all we can know or imagine. And he will always be there for us. All we need to do is just ask. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to have the faith in you for all things in our life. Faith that we can depend on you, especially when we're doing your work. We know that you love us. Show us your love through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. That you will always have our best interests in mind as we meet resistance to our message. Let not pride block our way into asking for your help. Help us to just ask. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Mission Praise 1209. My heart is filled with thankfulness. My heart is filled with thankfulness to Him who bore my pain, who planned the depths of my sinfulness and clothed me in his light and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart
Let us say the grace to one another, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.